Well, hi again and welcome back. Now, in the last video, we talked about the stop take and we also drew that up on the whiteboard. We also talked about how the stop take is part of the process of accumulation and manipulation. And this, of course, ties into the earlier explanation about how the three phases are blended together and how we are looking for the predominant phase. In this video, we're going to be talking about where do you get out of the market? In this context, I'm talking about where do you get out of the market with a profit? Now, I have this saying that I often repeat when I'm talking about trading, which is, you know, any fool can get into a market. All you have to do is click your mouse. But it takes skill to know when to exit that trade. Now, regardless of where you enter the market and how far your trade has gone into the money, you cannot make any money until you eventually close that trade for a profit. Profit, then, is determined by your ability to know when to exit the market. Now, there are many what I call trading truisms around this that traders seem to delight in propagating. One of those is the concept of using a trailing stop to exit the market. You see, in theory, there could be nothing better than a trailing stop because it follows up your profits and you only exit from your profit trade when the market turns. If you stop and think about that for a moment, it does sound like a great idea. This is one of the problems with trading truisms. They always sound or appear to make perfect sense until, that is, you use them in practice and you break them down and find out what's really going on. It's also worth noting here that the idea of a trailing stop is heavily promoted by brokers. And since brokers make money from you every time you place a trade, you might want to have a think about that. So let's look at the concept of a trailing stop loss on a whiteboard. OK, so here we are on the whiteboard again. Let's have a quick look at what we were talking about earlier. In this case, we want to look at um, the concept of the trailing stop and also where to get out. The reason I'm bringing in the trailing stop is to really explain, you know, many times throughout the course, I talk about trading truisms and the danger of these. Uh, not so much the danger of them, but it, they can often cause you to give away a lot of profits needlessly by operating a, a sort of exit strategy. And we'll talk about that in this particular one, which is the, which is the, um, the trailing stop, because it's banded around as being a good thing to do. And, and I want to present another side of that to you. So in this particular case, we will assume that we've got an upward moving market. So we'll start here. OK, so there's your upward moving market. And we'll assume that you've been very fortunate and that you've got in around about here. And we'll call that a level of 100. OK, just, just to make it nice and simple. I know that's not relative to uh, uh, currency markets, but we'll just call it 100. That's where you got in. And so your stop loss initially, let's say, is at 70 which is a, a 30 pip uh, stop loss. OK, and then the market uh, starts to go up and you're, you're doing very well. And that's great. And that's lovely. Up, up and up it goes. And let's suppose it reaches up to around about 130 before it does this roll over through here again. Now, we know about this because we've been taught about this. We, we've gone over this. We talked about the, the blending of the accumulation, manipulation of the profit release. So we're expecting this to happen. And let's suppose that this retrace through here is, is just 10 pips, let's say. So as the market comes back down through here, you would then have the distance between your stop loss will be now 20 pips because the stop loss has been following you up higher and higher and higher, matching you as the, matching the price as it goes up. And then when it comes back down, your stop loss stops at here and then comes down. So any distance that is then eating back down into what you would have had if you'd have exited at this level here at 130. Sorry, I've done that wrong, didn't I? 130, not 103. OK, so then the market then goes on up and it gets up to 160, let's say, from your original entry point. And again, your stop loss is moving up with with you as you're going and your stop loss is up now at around about the 130. Now, of course, what can happen here and often will happen here because we know about this uh, going through here, this level of accumulation, manipulation, distribution is that the market can actually come down, stop you out there and you will walk away with your 60 pips. Now, what I want you to consider is to is to make this more of an intelligent type of following uh, a, a trailing stop. So in other words, let's go back to when I talked about having a defined exit. Now, something I want to want you to do is when you go away from looking at these videos is go to your charts and I want you to map out what I call the 90 pip move. So in other words, look at where, say, the market has originally started off from. We've had our accumulation, manipulation, we've had our move, and then the market's got into this up move, the move that we're looking at uh, through this point now. 
So look at where the move started from in this case here and map this out in terms of a 90 pip upward move. Map it out. And this is where I want you to think about exiting along this level through here. Now, what you're doing is you're going to be following this up intelligently. So you're going to be moving your stops relative to this target of 90 pips from the start of the move. Very simple to work out. Just put it on there where you think the start of the move is and look along that and also work from the basis obviously where the move started from being from the accumulation, manipulation and profit release as it gets into that. It's quite easy to spot that once you've done that a few times. You will see that uh, very, very easy. You'll, you'll be able to put that on. So getting back to our trailing stop, we've got our 60 pips here because we weren't intelligent about what we were doing. We weren't using the knowledge that we have of this blending of accumulation, manipulation and profit release to move our stops. So very cautious about this. So then as the market carries on up, of course, if you've been stopped here, you've got 60 The market then carries on up. And now you've given away these effectively these 30 pips on here. So what you really want to be doing is before you move this stop, so when you, you rather than having a trailing stop, you intelligently move your stop when you see things like this occur. So in other words, when you realize that, hey, that would be a good place to, you know, I see how people with this trailing stop would have done this. I see where people would have moved their stops to, stops where. When you've seen this and a little stop run, that is the time. Then you move your stop lot under here and you're carrying on trading up, looking for your target for your 90 pips overall move out of here. So that's the use of looking at, looking at it more in depth rather than just letting the market do this trailing stop because trailing stops ultimately will mean that you miss this last part of the move or certainly, you know, not always getting right out of the top, but certainly it will move that you, you miss on average about just under a third of what you could have had. And that third will make a massive difference to your overall profitability. So there we are. I'm going to leave you with that to, to look at. You can map this out on your, your, yourself, this 90 pip range. And I want you to look as the market goes up, look at the idea of a trailing stop and look at how much money you lose by giving away as the market comes back against you. And then look at this, how you can use this information that we've gone through here to then intelligently move your stop afterwards and then trade up. And as you're getting closer up to here and you realize that this is your 90 pip, you might want to move your stop up then to 25 and then to 20 and then to 15. So what you're doing is you're shutting this down, but you're still giving it a little bit more room to carry on. And then when you get to this around this level here, you really want to be pushing this up, maybe up to 10 pips here. And you're so you're taking out that maximum amount of pips that you can from this point to there. So over the over the 90 pips overall, you're taking out this very sweet spot in the middle through this bit here. OK, so we've come a long way. We started with how I discovered the market makers business model. We moved on to form and content and how it is vital to understand the difference between them. We then talked about how the market makers run their business using the analogy of the market stall selling apples. Next, we covered how manipulation works, uh, which leads into the blending of the three phases. Then we went on to stop taking. And finally, we looked at how to exit the market to realize maximum profit. Well, that's it for this series of videos. If you're serious about becoming a professional profitable trader, then do consider getting my book. Uh, you'll find it an invaluable tool to keep you on your on your trading desk. And if you like the idea of us working more closely together, then there is my comprehensive trader training course you should take a look at. If you immerse yourself in this training, you will come out the other side of it with a set of trading skills that others will aspire to emulate. And the best bit is there is absolutely no risk to you getting that course and making a start. I'll put the links to everything below. All the very best for my family to yours. I'll catch up with you real soon.